So in this example, we see that Spring is going to map uh, any URL with slash dictionary to this controller. And this is done by the request mapping annotation, as we can see here with uh, slash dictionary. Well, how does uh, Spring narrow the mapping? Well, one way that it does it is through the request method, through the get, the post, the delete, uh, or the put. In this ex example, we have a method here called get. Um, and as you can see, we from the request mapping annotation, we have the request method of get. Uh, so in this case here, we can see that this method is going to return back all the words that are in our dictionary and from the response body annotation is going to pass back those results onto our response. So if we go to our test client, which we have here, we see that we have slash dictionary. We are using the get uh, method. Um, in this example, our response is going to be passed back as JSON. Um, so if we run this, we see that we get a response, and our response contains all the words in the dictionary. In this case, we only have two, and that is set and list. Well, if we go back to our example, we can see another way in which uh, the mapping is narrowed, and that is by the parameters that are passed along on the request. So we have another method, or another method called get, um, and in this case, our method takes a single word. Uh, so this method is going to return back uh, a word that we are searching for in the dictionary. And as you can see from the request mapping, this is done by specifying uh, a value of a single value, the slash word, which means that we're going to get back a single uh, request parameter. And this request parameter is going to be the word that we're searching for. Um, and again, we're using the get request method. And from this path variable annotation, we are mapping that single uh, request parameter to the single uh, parameter that we have for this method, which is word. So as we can see here, we are going to return back that word uh, from the dictionary. And again, because of the response body annotation, we are going to pass back our results on the response. So if we go to our client here, everything is the same, slash dictionary. We are using the get method. Uh, if we pass, if we specify a word, a single parameter of set, then we can see that in our response, we are returned back that word set and the definition uh, from the dictionary. So let's go back to our controller. Well, let's say that our dictionary doesn't contain uh, the word we searched for. If you remember, uh, the default status that is returned back on our response is an OK status. Well, an OK status is not really an acceptable status uh, if a word's not found. Because um, then the user's going to think everything was fine, but wow, I didn't get any results. So as you can see here, if the word that, uh, that we searched for cannot be found in our dictionary, we are throwing a not found exception. Well, if you remember, the, we had an annotation called exception handler. And this annotation says that if this controller uh, throws uh, the not found exception, then this is the method that's supposed to handle that exception. Well, you can also see that we've also defined a response status uh, annotation. And this annotation basically says that this is the status that I want to return on, on the response. So instead of returning the default OK status, we are going to return back a not found status, which is a 404 error. So what's going to happen is if up here, if our word is not found, we throw the not found exception. Well, now the user is going to get some feedback of a 404 error to let them know that the word did not exist. So if we go back to our sample client and let's search for a word, let's search for foo, which we know doesn't exist in the database in the dictionary, well now we see that we have a status of 404 that comes along on our response. So now the user is given some good feedback to know that hey, the uh, web service is working but the, the word that you uh, requested doesn't exist.